Thank you. Uh, this year, uh, we are pleased to announce a new award. Uh, Saturday Night Live creator and director Lauren Michaels and Penn America are thrilled to introduce the Penn Mike Nichols Writing for Performance Award. This honor will be given annually in recognition of the unparalleled legacy of playwright, screenwriter, and director Mike Nichols. Mike Nichols' storied career spanning six decades included every aspect of entertainment, from his beginnings in the improvisational comedy with the great Elaine May, to writing for film and television, and legendarily directing and producing some of the most memorable plays and movies of our time. Starting in 1963 with Barefoot in the Park, up to the 2013 revival of Betrayal, Mike directed 22 Broadway productions. His landmark films include Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, The Graduate, Silkwood, my personal favorite, Biloxi Blues. <laughs> that might be the only time that you hear that sentence. <laughs> but that movie provided me with my one chance to work with Mike. And I would like to tell you that we spent years after that scouring, looking for material to do together again. But I think that would only be half true because I think I was looking for material. And <laughs> Mike was uh, happily who's struggling to work with Meryl Streep, uh, <laughs> Melanie Griffith, Harrison Ford, Tom Hanks, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Jack Nicholson, Emma Thompson, Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton, Nathan Lane. But Mike and I, we remained uh, very good friends. And I, I remember, I was remembering, I uh, was with Diane before, one time we were uh, uh, standing around at his house in Connecticut, and uh, we were at a field looking at some horses, his horses, at one time, he had had a lot of horses, but he only had a few. And he had two llamas. Uh, somebody had given Mike some llamas. And Mike said to me, don't ever buy anything that eats. So, very good advice, and I wanted to share that with all of you. Don't buy anything that eats. Um, Fortunately, he, he, he left us all with a body of work, which I think you already just saw. I thought you were going to see now. Believe me, it's an amazing list of work that that man did. He's one of the great directors of all time. Um, this award tonight celebrates a writer whose work pushes boundaries and breaks new thematic and artistic ground, and who has the potential to impact culture the way that Mike Nichols' inspiring legacy of work did. Our inaugural winner began writing in high school, which is where I first met him and where we first worked together. I played my first leading role in his first play, which was called, and I'm not kidding, The First Day, <laughs> written with Bruce Cornwall, our, our teacher. After that, uh, I and others would read pretty much everything that Kenny wrote in his living room. We'd read it out loud. He gained a slightly wider audience and considerably more critical acclaim in 1996 with his play, This Is Our Youth. His success in theater continued with the Waverly Gallery, Lobby Hero, both beautifully revived on Broadway in 2018. He and I did his play, Starry Messenger, in 2009, and we'll be doing that again in the spring in London. A new block of tickets is currently available. <laughs> He made his screenwriting debut in 1999 with Analyze This, and has subsequently been nominated for the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay three times for You Can Count On Me, which he also directed, Gangs of New York, and Manchester by the Sea, where he again directed and which won the Oscar, among many other awards for Best Writing. I am proud to have been in every movie that he's directed usually playing an unsympathetic asshole. <laughs> Which is a, a lot of fun, <laughs> and it's challenging, <laughs> because I'm not like that in real life. <laughs> right, Kenny? I always thought of Mike as a sort of a teacher. Being around him, I always felt I might learn something about plays, movies, about life. I tried hard to remember everything said, every moment that I had with him. 
I feel that way about Kenny, too. And I noticed lately a slew of young actors who seem to, be, to want to be around Kenny, just like we all wanted to be around Mike. I've known Kenny for over 40 years now, and it's not every day that a person gets to present an award named after a dear friend to his best friend. So please join me in celebrating this year's winner for the Penn Mike Nichols Writing for Performance Award to Kenneth Lonergan. I can't give you anything but love, baby. That's the only thing I let you have, baby. Do we move on? Do we move on? You're sure to find the heaviness in that case. Oh. Well, I, I started out this evening feeling quite overwhelmed, and now I feel m much more overwhelmed. Um, I just want to thank Pen America very much for, for bestowing this somewhat intimidating honor on me, and thank Lauren and, and uh, Brian and, and Merrill for, for thinking of me for it. Um, uh, the one thing that struck me thinking about what to say when I came here was how this room is, and this organization is really about the writer uh, as, a, as, a, as a bold, important voice. Uh, and the, this organization as a, as a kind of a vanguard in the world that takes not just the creative work of the writer, but the, 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 the aspect of writing which is attached to human rights and freedom of thought and, and political action and advocacy and human rights all over the world and really does something about it. <clears throat> the world where I do most of my work in the theater and in show business, the writer doesn't really have that. In the movie business, the writer doesn't have that role. Um, the actors are in the front, uh, and the writer is kind of a contemplative, craven figure <laughs> sitting in the back, complaining <laughs> into the computer or onto the page, and then having other more dynamic, more courageous, more front-footed people taking the words and, and trying to get into action. Um, so it's a, a particular honor to be uh, to be. Uh, honored by, by an organization like this and to be in a room like this. Um, there's a, a couple of interesting differences about screenwriting and playwriting, if you just indulge me for a moment, that, that I was thinking about on my way here and over the last few weeks. One is that the, 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 the novelist and the journalist and the poet and the essayist um, can, there's no, Famously, there's no gap. There's no there's no intermediary between the writer and the and the reader and the writer and the audience. Um, with a playwright and a screenwriter or director, you have a couple of levels. You have you have the, you you only write for the characters, and the characters are only embodied by the actors. So you're able to hide behind a kind of a veil, or you, you're, you're the outlet of what you're writing about is is transformed by the imaginations of the imagination. Your imagination going into a character and the actor's imagination taking that over. If you haven't directed your own work, that's the director's imagination as well. Um, it can be somewhat humbling being a screenwriter or a playwright because, and the fun of it is that all these other people contribute to the fantasy which you created originally but becomes theirs as much as it ever was yours. Um, and that's, that's kind of the fun of being a, a playwright or a screenwriter or a film director. Um, another interesting thing about it is that you can't directly solve your expositional problems. If you're a novelist, you can say at any point you want, I imagine I'm not a novelist, but you can say the South is coming down around their, e the South was coming down around their ears. You can't have a character walk into the room and say, gee, Bill, the South is coming down around our ears. What will we do? You have to kind of think of a way around it. And I'm aware that those challenges exist in the novel as well. but. Uh, it's kind of one of the fun things about playwriting and screenwriting is to play around with how you convey information when you have no narration, when you have no direct address. Um, of course, there is something is rotten in the state of Denmark, which is actually quite a good line. So, <laughs> so I, I, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, which just brings me to my last point, and then I will wrap up. <laughs> but that, 
the, you can be wrong as a playwright, you can continue to be wrong as a playwright and a screenwriter because your characters never have to agree about anything. You can hide your views between, your, your doubts and your views between two people who argue with each other and the argument is never settled. And that's why, in a way, uh, the, the pattern you make of the world is, is one you make around the corners. Again, I know that's true of all the other art forms that I've mentioned and the craft that goes into that, but there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a way of hiding in the back that a playwright has that I'm not sure uh, the, uh, the is, is uh, at the disposal of a novelist, a poet, a journalist, or an essayist. Um, and then finally, just like to say that to receive the Mike Nichols Award is is a, there's just something in particular. It's just a, it's just stunning to me. I I one of the great honors of my life was having the great Elaine May in my play, The Waverly Gallery, this year. And anyone who saw that production knows that that's one of the great performances of all time. And it's just kind of a dream come true. Mike Nichols was an innovator who, with the wedge of his innovation, became part of the mainstream, which is something that the mainstream really needs and something that everyone in this room has provided them with and that Penn takes and spreads all over the world in, in even more concrete ways. And I'm just very, very honored and privileged to be here. Thank you very much.